the heart of the entertainment world, the Hollywood Palace. Christmas at the Hollywood Palace with your hosts, Bing Crosby and Perry Como. Featuring the Crosby family, Catherine, Harry, Mary, and Nathaniel. Diane Carroll and John Biner. With special appearances by Catherine Crosby, Harry Crosby, Mary Crosby, Ray Charles, Bill Harback, Nick Perito, and Felisa Vanoff. And now, from the Hollywood Palace, here is your Christmas Eve host, Bing Crosby! Candles gleaming inside Painted candy canes on the tree Santa's on his way He's filled his sleigh with things Things for you and for me It's that time of year When the world falls in love Every song you hear Seems to say Merry Christmas May you know your dreams come true and this song of mine in three-quarter time wishes you and yours the same thing too. Merry Christmas, may your New Year dreams come true. And this song of mine in quarter time wishes you and yours happy holidays, happy holidays. Hear the Christmas bells are ringing, happy holidays. The Hollywood Palace was able to bring together genius talent, great production from every aspect of show business, the performing arts, presented all in one hour brilliantly. These acts on that show for those seven seasons over the top of the line of every section. It was singers, animal acts, acrobats, sketches. It's all pure gold, I think. Well, my late husband, Nick Vanoff, created the Hollywood Palace. It was the ultimate variety show, hosted each week by a different host, a star. And I do remember that when he was later then getting this all clear in his head, he needed a major giant to make it so that everybody else would want to be on this show. And he called Bing. And when we asked him if he would kick us off to start to give us on a plateau that uh, gave us some glamour, he said, absolutely. So it was, it was the, it was, he was just modest. He became our patron saint. He did 30 shows for us, you know, through the seven seasons. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas, Joyo Noel, Buon Natale, Feliz Navidad, Anglan Hul, or as my friend Sandy Koufax would say, Happy Hanukkah. I think after he did Going My Way and did Bells of St. Mary's, uh, he became acceptable as a symbol of Christmas. Dad was Christmas, whether it was in November doing the shows or at home. So that was just, he was sort of the through line when it came to Christmas. 
But what it represented for us was to be together as a family, to work together and do something that we enjoy doing, um, and, uh, and, and having a great time. If I could talk to the animals, just imagine it, chatting with a chimp and chimpanzees. Imagine talking to a tiger, chatting with a cheetah. What a neat achievement that would be. We could talk with the animals, yes. learn their languages, maybe take an animal degree. That's elevating. We'd study elephant and eagle, buffalo and beagle, alligator, guinea pig and flea. I would converse in polar bear and python, and I would curse in fluent kangaroo. Oh, Daddy, do you think that you could speak rhinoceros? Oh, of course, Rhinoceros. Can't you? If I conferred with our furry friends, man to animal, I think of the amazing repartee. If I could walk with the animals, talk with the animals, run, squeak, squawk with the animals, and they could talk with me. Talk to a skunk about what? You could sing to him, Daddy. That might be a little too dangerous. How do you mean that? <laughs> if I consulted with the quadrupeds, think what fun we'd have asking over crocodiles for tea. Or maybe lunch with two or three lions, yes. walruses and sea lions. What a lovely place the world would be. If I spoke slang to orangutans, the advantages any fool on earth could plainly see. Plainly see. Discussing Eastern art and dramas with intellectual llamas. Oh, that's a big step forward, you'll agree. I learned to speak in antelope and turtle. Oh, that's progress. My Pekingese would be extremely good. You're a grand girl. Could you sing a song in hippopotamus? Oh, why not, Amos? You would? You would, right? <laughs> if I could parley with the pachyderms. It's a fairy tale worthy of the Hans Anderson and Grimm. A man who walks with the animals, talks with the animals, grunts and squeaks and squawks with the animals. And they could squeak. Squeak, 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 squeak. And squawk. Squawk, 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 squawk. And talk. Yeah, You do that part real good. And talk with me. He is the epitome of being relaxed. First of all, he loves doing what he's doing. And the other thing is he has fun doing it. He was so truthful with how he performed and that I think he touched people in a way that nobody else had, at least up to that point. And then he was the teacher for all the others that came along. Perry Como uh, was his number one fan. I remember once in, we were in Las Vegas, uh, during, um, we were doing something, we were down in the dressing room, and somebody must have asked him, oh, what do you do between shows? He said, I listen to the old Crosby records to see if I'm doing it right. He did. He, he, was, he was Perry's idol. There's no question about it. He shared the same sense of rhythm and approach to music and entertaining, I think, that Dad did. He, he was very relaxed. Um, now, he was a crooner, had a wonderful voice, but um, uh, he had just kind of a soft touch, you know, with the camera, with music, in a conversation with somebody. Uh, he was a great guy. The first Noel, the angel did say, was a certain poor shepherds in fields as they
sing glory to the newborn king peace on earth and mercy mark god and sin is reconciled joyful all ye nations rise join in lion of the skies with angelic host proclaim christ is born in bethlehem hark the herald angels sing When Perry sang, I think he was able to make you feel that he was singing directly to you and only to you. Perry Como was the most underrated singer of our generation. And again, like Bing, he knew exactly what he was doing. He was so comfortable in his own skin. He was so comfortable singing that beautiful, beautiful honey voice. And the audiences loved it because he was the guy next door. He was Perry. He wasn't trying to impress you with anything. When he sang, he wasn't trying to impress you either. He sang from his heart. And that's what made him so special. When you open the door You can tell When there's love in a home Every table and chair Seem to smile Do come in stay for a while you almost feel you've been there once before by the shine and the glow Come again anytime You'll be welcome Wherever you roam You can tell I was doing Peter Pan, and the first year, uh, Harry was invited to audition, and he auditioned, singing Happy Birthday to You, and he was asked to be one of the children in Peter Pan, and Bing said, no, I need him. So he took him off to the Hollywood Palace. You know, the youngest member of our cast hasn't really been out here yet, but he's waiting backstage, and I must tell you, he's, he's chafing at the leash. He's a very nice kid, and I happen to know his parents well. So let's bring him out here now. Come on out, son. <laughs> now, what's your name, young man? Harry. Harry. Oh, well. Were you named after one of our presidents, Harry Truman? No, he was a piano player. I'm named after a singer. After a singer? <laughs> Who? You, Daddy. You, Daddy. I was seven years old, uh, and he had taken me down to Los Angeles to really watch him rehearse. Um, I could just hang out with him. So I, I was backstage, and, and I'd brought down my guitar, which I'd been practicing religiously for 
12 months, I think, at the time, and had learned a little Christmas carol that I had uh, been taught in the first grade. And I had no agenda whatsoever, but I sat down and was practicing backstage. And I think Bill Harback came up and said, uh, you know, let me hear that. Um, would you, you know, would you play that again? So I played this little, this little uh, Christmas carol and sang. And um, I never forget what the lyrics were. I think it was, oh, come little children, oh, come one and all. Oh. A vision so lovely, a light bright as day. He was so good. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the fellow who's in charge of the television set in my house. Harry Lillis Crosby III. Well, Harry, now that you're out here, what would you like to do? I'd like you to sing a song, Daddy. Like me to sing a song? Well, which one would you like to hear? White Christmas. Why White Christmas? Because that's the only one you know. <laughs> <laughs> You're about 80% right, too. Well, I'll tell you, I'll do it, but I think you ought to sing something first, okay? Okay, Daddy. I must tell you, this, uh, this youngster has very elevated musical taste because for his song, he's going to sing O Come Little Children from Hansel and Gretel by Engelbert Humperdinck. I am? <laughs> Go ahead. O come, little children, O come, one and all, O come to the cradle in Bethlehem's stall. Come look in the manger that sleeps in the hay. An infant so light, lovely, as light bright as day. I remember his, his last response was, it's good, kid, a little bubble on the high note. And that was it. <laughs> and that was really the beginning of uh, what became our Christmas shows. Dad told us. I think he said, you know, you're going to do this show. Curtis and my mother, we all had the bug by then, except for maybe Nathaniel. But Harry and I were, were ready to beat each other down to get on stage. There they are. Great brood. This is uh, Nathaniel. I'm 12 years old. That's right. And this is uh, Mary Frances. I'm 7 years old. Hello. And you? This is Harry. I'm 8 years old. And this is Catherine. And I'm not talking. <laughs> well, that's a novelty. <clears throat> <laughs> Have you kids made any plans? <laughs> they were thrilled to be able to work with their father. Absolutely thrilled. He created a wonderful atmosphere and had, which is such a great idea to do the Hollywood Palace. And I, of course, loved it because it was a very special time that I had with Dad. Working with, with Bing in that environment was so good. It was such an education. We'd go through the Christmas carols and the, and the different songs and the sketches and, and do the blocking and, uh, and see the different sets. And it was all a great experience. Not only do we get to get out of school for two weeks, that, I mean, that was key, but they took off our braces. And we all had this, these horrible metal braces that just, you know, are the worst in the world, and they would take them off for the Christmas shows. So that was, that was Christmas right there. Kids were so warm and so not conscious that they were acting or performing. They were like pros right before the camera turned off. Said the little lamb to the shepherd boy Do you hear what I hear? Do you hear what I hear? Ringing through the sky, shepherd boy Do you hear what I hear? Do you hear what I hear? A song, a song High above the tree With a voice as big as the sea Do you know what I know? A child, a child, she 
This is a season to be uh, sure it is. <laughs> this is a season to be jolly, but some people just don't know that the season is over. We look now at the first man, at the last man. <laughs> And now, here is your host, Perry Como. Pennsylvania folks are traveling down to Dixie's Golden Shore From Atlantic to Pacific, gee the traffic is terrific Oh there's no place like home for the holidays Cause no matter how far away you roam If you want to be happy in a million ways for Home for the Holidays is a song that, I don't know if it was written for him, but he was the first one to sing it and record it. And uh, it became, you know, a household thing with him. Oh, it sort of brings a lump in my throat because of what it says. And, um, well, uh, Big Daddy owned it, you know, as far as I'm concerned, and he meant it. Uh, the lyric is very touching. What's the holidays without family and home? I met a man who came from Tennessee. He was a heading for Pennsylvania and some homemade pumpkin pie. From Pennsylvania, folks are traveling down the Dixie's Golden Shore. From Atlantic to Pacific, Jesus traffic is terrific. Oh, there's no place like home for the holiday. Christmas was very important to Perry, and I think you see that when he sings any of the Christmas songs. You can tell that his heart is in it, and his devotion is, is there. No, very, very, very important. And we uh, uh, respected that, and did them with great respect. Yes, the Christmas carols were very important to him. Oh. 
Let me see it. It's like a little rag doll. I guess nobody wanted her anymore. Kind of reminds me of the little match girl. Who's the little match girl? Well, she was a girl in a story that Hans Christian Andersen wrote. Tell us the story, Daddy. All right. It was late on a bitterly cold Christmas Eve. The snow was falling, and a poor little girl was wandering out in the dark, cold streets. She was bareheaded and barefoot. She carried a bunch of matches in her apron, and she held a packet of them in her hand. Nobody had bought any of her matches all day long. Nobody had even given her a single penny. Well, the poor little girl was hungry. She was cold. She looked the picture of misery. Lights were shining from every window, and there was a most delicious odor of roast turkey in the streets. For it was Christmas Eve, and she couldn't forget that. She found a sheltered laneway, and here she crouched, drawing her feet under her. Oh, but she was colder than ever. Her little hands were almost dead with cold. One little match would do some good. Should she dare use a match to warm herself? Only one? It burnt with a bright, clear flame, just like a little candle when she held her hand around it. Suddenly, the little girl pictured herself sitting in front of a big stove. There was a splendid fire blazing in it. But just as she was stretching out her feet to warm them, the flame went out, the stove vanished, and she was left sitting with the end of the burnt match in her hand. She struck a new one. Now she could see a table with snowing white cloth and pretty china. A roast turkey with gravy and cranberry sauce was on it. And then the match went out and there was nothing but the coal. She lit another match. This time, she was sitting under a lovely Christmas tree. The little girl stretched out both her hands toward it. And then out went the match. All the Christmas candles on the tree rose higher and higher till she saw that they were only twinkling stars. And one of them fell and made a big streak of light across the sky. Now someone is dying, thought the little girl. For her grandmother, the only person who had ever been kind to her, used to say, when a star falls, a soul is going up to God. Now she struck another match, and this time her grandmother appeared. Grandmother, cried the little creature, do take me with you. I know you're going to vanish when the match goes out. You'll vanish like the warm stove and the delicious turkey and the beautiful Christmas tree. Quickly, she struck a whole bunch of matches because she, well, she did so long to keep her grandmother with her. Grandmother had never before looked so big or so beautiful. She lifted the little girl up in her arms and they soared in a halo of light and joy, far, far above the earth, where there was no more cold, no hunger, no pain, for they were with God. When they found her the next morning, they said, she must have tried to warm herself. But nobody knew what beautiful vision she had seen, nor in what a halo she had entered with her grandmother upon the glories of Christmas. Oh, it's so sad. Nobody on earth cared. Where is love? Does it fall from skies above? Is it underneath the Christmas tree that she'd been dreaming of? Where is she who closed her
remember it vividly because it just it it called to my heart I was a little girl and there was ballet and it's this very sad story I mean if you think about the story it's tragic it's not sort of a happy sugar plum fairy story and it was magical to me she's Papa's little girl and uh, she performed it beautifully and she like her dad was an original article this is why people loved it, because this wasn't some precocious little brat singing something. She was a little kid singing it honestly, like her father taught her. I was really afraid, and she was just perfectly comfortable, perfectly happy, and was unconsciously brilliant. Now what do you want for Christmas? A brand new bike. And what do you want for Christmas? You know what I like. And what do you want for Christmas? A talking dog. And what do you want for Christmas? Beat that song. <laughs> when Nathaniel did sing the first year, or the second year, doing Teeth, that's all, uh, he missed, he came in a little late on the beat, and being, you could see him getting ready to take over. But when, when Nathaniel said teeth, that's all. <laughs> Bing said, you've got that part real good. And little, the, oh God, the little, little one with these one tooth out here. Uh, it was like, to be eaten when you, they were on television, you, went, you, you, you had to keep smiling. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge in a pear tree. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me Two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree On the third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me Three French hens, two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree And so it went on for twelve lovely days Gift after gift after gift Twelve fiddlers, Britain, oven lords, a leap, and ten ladies dance, and nine pipers pipe, and eight maids of milk, and heaven swans are swimming, six geese are laying, five golden rings, four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves. What are they wanting my two front feet? <laughs> all, all of the Christmas songs were marvelous, of course, especially with the children, but one of the ones that I enjoyed very much, um, especially when I went back and looked over the tapes, I loved the duet that Catherine and Bing sang together. It was very charming because after all of the family things that they were doing with their little children, they sat on a bench and they sang about what they would do once all the children were married. Chemistry was great. Chemistry was great. I mean, uh, first of all, my mother was dying to get out there, get on stage. Catherine would throw a, a look at Bing if Bing would do something, a little zets, you know? And Catherine with those modest eyes of hers would give them, with a raise the thing. No, it made it all work. And they, um, they just had a great time. And you know, he was really proud of my mom. Well, it looks like we'll never have our vacation, I guess. That kills the whole thing. Of course we will. How'd we do it? Just as soon as the children get married. Oh, great. I better hurry up and get them on dating game. There. <laughs> get something going, don't you think? <laughs> now, when the kids get married, I'm gonna spend each day in bed. Chocolates in my pocket. 
pillow under my head I'm gonna read just what I please I'll even finish War and Peace But I wish they'd marry soon Catherine, hand me my collected Tolstoy. I want to read up a bit. Well, I have plans of my own. Well, let me hear. When the kids get married, yeah. I'm going to teach myself to paint. Something, nothing very fancy. No. Something kind of quaint. Be better. I'm going to paint the way we live. Call it early primitive. I wish <laughs> they'd marry soon. Ah, when the kids get married, I'm going to buy a chicken farm. Lay a little nest egg safely out of harm. Then when I find my business clicks, I may go into politics. But I wish they'd marry soon. When the kids get married, What's your plan? I'm going to take a famous trip. Where? Go to native places on a trading ship. Fair? I'm going to see Tahiti too. Learn to do the yeah, hoochie. Why a steady? What's <laughs> Now when the kids get married, I'm gonna play the saxophone. I'll practice till I lay down, Carmen, every golden tone. If the neighbors say they sue, I'll fly my old kazoo, but I wish they'd marry soon. When the kids get married, I'm gonna try the violin. Something nice and simple, that's how I'll begin. When I finish clear to loon, I'll I wish they'd marry soon. You can get arrested. <laughs> when the kids get married, we're gonna play for one and all. Make new recitals at Philharmonic Hall. We're gonna be a double bell, the oldest team in Bonneville. If they don't marry soon, I'm gonna spend a year in bed. I'm gonna dye my hair bright red. Spend my time just playing golf. I'm gonna take my girdle off. Watch it. Play the ground. Play the loop. Take that second honeymoon. I wish they. Here, a little gray haired boy there. Hi. Come <laughs> here, you little Italian. Sit down over here. Oh, it's a little chunky Italian, too. <laughs> Harry, what would you like to see on the show now, huh? Uncle Bob Hope, we need some laughs around here. <laughs> well, now, I'd certainly like to welcome you back to our, our palace potpourri. <laughs> A popular performers, uh, yeah, the pick of the pack and the and the pack of the pip, all packed and pip. You're a pop, pip, pleasure. You could be swinging on a star. <laughs> that was a mighty good impression. Uh, For a minute there, I thought I was a rerun. <laughs> pretty good, yes, it was. Pretty good. Yeah. Well, that was so authentic. Two of your kids just asked me for their allowance. <laughs> Did you give it to them? No, I wanted to keep it authentic. Good man. <laughs> Hey, Bing, I know a lot of your friends in show business would like to have been here today, but they, they, they could just couldn't. Well, a lot of people Very away, busy, yeah. but they did send some telegrams. I'd love to see them. Well, you got them? Let me hear. Certainly have. Lay them on me. First one's from Ed Sullivan. Here's wishing you a really rich girl of the And I just like to say hi, pure girl, of your, your, our show. I just like to say, tip up your, tip up your, tip up your, tip up there's one from John Wayne. Oh, I'm glad to get one from John. <laughs> uh, let me tell you about Christmas, mister. Ain't no one who knows more about the Yuletide season than old Duke here. Not I ever tell you about that time we lit up the Christmas tree in Apache territory. Uh, we gave ourselves away, but we had a good time. <laughs> Singing telegram. Oh, I love singing telegram. Uh, Who's this one from? This was from Johnny Mathis. Johnny Mathis, my favorite singer. I'd like to wish you a merry Christmas. Christmas is, is family. 
and it's a time of love and celebration. So we would get up early in the morning and uh, we went to church and uh, we would um, uh, come back for breakfast and we were all just ready to just dive into the tree and we had to kind of finish our breakfast and it wasn't until we were all done and we were excused for the table and, and we'd dive in around the tree. We made our own Christmas decorations. So we would, she would have styrofoam balls and pins and sequins and, and then we would pick out the Christmas cards that we liked, or we would use photos of ourselves from school. And so each year, as we looked at this big, huge, gorgeous, unbelievably cliche tree, it, it had the, the, the passage of time on it as well. So we could see the, the ornaments and, and remember that Christmas, and that Christmas, and that other Christmas. The tree really filled this alcove. And it was such fun getting the lights on and then getting the decorations on. And then at the very last, from the, that stairwell, we would hang over and put the star on the top. Every year we had to hold Mary Frances by her feet to get her close enough to get the star just perfectly adjusted. This tree, for many years, was full of joy. Although I think our real Christmas celebrations were held at the Hollywood Palace. The children have something for you too. Well, children, bring, bring in Daddy's present. <laughs> A golf cart for me? Isn't that marvelous? I didn't think my children would ever do so much. We did. Merry, Merry Christmas, Dad. Well, thank you very much. What's this? Three new golf balls. This is your present. Three new golf balls. What about the golf cart? I thought that was for me. Oh, no, that's Harry's. It's a gift from Jack Benny. <laughs> well, I must say the world is changing. Well, Merry Christmas to you now. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Bye-bye. Good luck. I think my dad was the best. I think my dad was one of the best singers. Probably, well, I'm biased, okay? Dad was the best singer in the world. Not one of the best. Dad was the best. Uh, that's, you know, my completely objective opinion. Well, he sang around the house all the time. I mean, all the time. He just did that. That was, he sang. He would sing, and he would sing these ridiculous little ditties. Um, oh, Katarina, oh, Katarina, to win my heart, you must be leaner. There's so much of you. Two could love you. Learn to swim, join the gym, eat Purina. So that's what Bing Crosby would sing. He wouldn't sing Moonlight Becomes You or True Love or Pennies from Heaven. He would sing these ridiculous songs that he had rewritten, and they were great fun. Some people have to work very hard to get ready to sing. Bing just sang. He breathed and he sang. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is brown, brown. On virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. Christmas wouldn't be complete without a carol, so we thought we'd get you the prettiest one we could find. Listen now to the very beautiful, wonderfully talented Diane Carroll. Diane Carroll, of course, is one of my favorite people in the whole world. So beautiful and so charming. Sings like an angel. He loved duets uh, with people he respected, the singers he liked. It shows Perry's ease and his charm and his ability to be really with the person that he's with. And stepping down from the stage to the step that they sat on, especially with Diane's dress, there was not easy. And he handled it and ad-libbed, and it's all so natural. Well, Diana, shall we do a, a Christmas song before ABC cancels Christmas? <laughs> Better do it quick. How about uh, 
silver bells. Now that sounded real nice. Of us. Silver bells, silver bells. It's Christmas time in the city. Hear them ring, ring a ling. Soon it will be Christmas day. City sidewalks. Busy sidewalks Dressed in holiday style In the air There's a feeling Of Christmas Children laughing People passing Meeting smile after smile And on every street corner You hear Silver Silver bells Silver bells, it's Christmas time in the city. Ring-a-ling, a ring-a-ling, hear them ring, hear them ring. Soon it will be Christmas day. Strings of street lights, even stoplights, blink a bright red and green. The shoppers rush home with their treasures. Hear the snow crunch, see the kids bunch. This is Santa's big scene. And above all the bustle, you hear silver bells, silver bells, silver bells, silver bells. Ring-a-ling, ding-a-ling, hear them ring, hear them ring, soon it will be Christmas Day. Ring-a-ling, ding-a-ling, hear them ring, hear them ring, soon it will be Christmas Day. People have always asked me that question, uh, what was Perry really like? And uh, Philip Olson coined the phrase many years ago, and he says, what you see is what you get. And that was Perry. Perry was an honest article, just a guy next door. Perry is the easiest, calmest, but perfect pitch, perfect phrasing, and warmth from his, his songs and the way he did them. Listen to him. Give yourself a chance to listen to a wonderful singer. And, uh, and a nice man. Yeah. I've kept tears in my eyes because the relationship between Perry and my husband and me and my family and his family was so close. Um, he. He did anything for Nick, and more importantly, my husband would do anything on earth for Perry. Perry generated that kind of love. He was a joy. A guy's guy, a gal's guy, an honest human being, a great talent. What else could you ask for? Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining.
for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, O oh, hear the angel voice. The sun is shining, the grass is green, the orange and palm trees sway. There's never been such a day in Beverly Hills, L.A. But it's December the 24th, and I'm longing to be up north. Bing always had that quality in his voice that could just stop me just do anything and that feeling that I had was evidently shared by an awful lot of people he touched on a very personal level he made people happy that's not a bad thing there was something so easy about him and with the pipe and the, the, the hat and the Everything was like, uh, th there's no stiffness at all. It was all marvelous, honey. He was, he was, uh, no, he was something else. I loved him. As talented as he was, um, as famous as he was, he was a regular guy. He was great with us. Uh, we all felt a lot of love. We all felt a lot of support. So that's how I like him remembered. Uh, not just as a great singer and a wonderful actor and just such a, a giving person, but, it, but as, a, as a terrific father, a great family man. You know, I think when you love someone, you, you kind of want them in your life forever, you know. And he is every Christmas and in my heart. I'm of a white Christmas Just like the ones I used to know Where the treetops glisten And children listen To hear sleigh bells in the snow card I write May your day be merry and bright And may all your Christmas be bright
Thank you very much. Well, a Merry Christmas, everybody, and good night.